Here are some of the most common video problems you will encounter with a drone, such as stuttering video, noisy images, blurry video, and we're going to look at why they happen and how to prevent them. Let's jump right in. Let's start with noisy video, and this is most likely to happen in low light or at night time, but it can still happen during the day. And the reason for this is because your drone is using a high ISO. What you'll find is if you're recording at night time in pro or manual mode, you'll need to start increasing your ISO up from 100 because you'll find that the image will be too dark. So by increasing this ISO, it will brighten your image up. And when looking at it on the small screen of your phone or the DJI RC, it can look absolutely fine. But when you come back and look at it on the computer, you'll find that the image can be quite noisy. Make sure you've first tried bringing your shutter speed down because by lowering your shutter speed, you will also brighten the image. And then if your image is still too dark, then increase the ISO. Now I did mention this can happen at daytime and you might be wondering why would I be running a high ISO at daytime? Well, if you put too strong of an ND filter on your drone and your drone's in auto mode, it may try and compensate for this by starting to jack up the ISO. A new addition to the camera settings menu of the Fly app is style parameters. And one of these is for noise reduction. So if your image is looking more noisy than usual, then it's worth checking this setting to make sure that it hasn't been accidentally lowered. And you can also increase this setting beyond zero to help with noise reduction. If you watch your video clip on your computer or even your phone and it looks absolutely fine, but when you put it into a sequence with some other footage with maybe your camera, you're maybe creating a travel vlog and the drone footage stutters in it. This can happen when the frame rate of your drone and your camera are different and your video timeline has set to one or the other. So if you record your drone videos at 25 FPS and you record your camera videos at 30 FPS, and your video timeline is set to 30 FPS, then the frame rate for your drone clips will be wrong. And when you export your video, your drone clips will stutter. The solution to this is simple. Make sure you're recording your drone videos in the same frame rate as any other recording device you're using, such as your camera. And then when you put them together into a timeline, you won't get this stuttering. The second most common reason for this is panning. If you do a quick pan to the right or a quick pan to the left when stationary, you'll get stuttering in the video. A few solutions I find that help this is running a slightly higher frame rate. So if you use 30 FPS over 25, for example, you'll get less stuttering. If you are gonna do a pan in motion, do it slower. So try doing it in sunny mode rather than sport mode. Seems to be the faster you do it, the more stuttering there is. Or just don't do a pan motion at all. I don't generally find a pan motion looks that great anyway with the drone stationary and just rotating in one spot. So I just don't really do it that often. If when you're watching the video back on your computer, it's really choppy, but when you watch it on the DJI Fly app or on the DJI RC or even on your phone, it's smooth. It just seems to be choppy when you're playing it back on your computer. It may be because of the codec that you recorded the video in. In the settings of the drone, you can choose between two codecs. To keep things simple, H.265 is a newer codec that allows higher quality and more efficient coding, meaning smaller file sizes. But this codec requires more processing power to watch, meaning that if your laptop or your computer isn't up to the task, doesn't have the processing power required, you'll start getting choppy or stuttery video. So for that reason, I recommend you use H.264. It's the one I use. It has the most compatibility across all computers. The file sizes will be slightly larger, but it means basically you can put your micro SD card into any computer and be able to play the videos back without it being choppy. Next up, we have blurry video, and there's nothing worse than when your video looks out of focus. So there's a few reasons why this might happen. You might have accidentally tapped the focus mode button on the screen and changed it from autofocus to manual focus. And if you do this again, because the screen's small, you might not realize everything is out of focus. So just make sure that that icon is set to autofocus. If you are using manual focus, you may not have set it correctly. A really handy tool you can use to make sure that you are focused correctly is by turning on focus peaking in the settings. And what this will do is it will apply a red outline to everything that's sharp and in focus. And you can then drag the focus dial until your point of interest has a red outline around it. And you will know that it is sharp in focus and looks great. If you're using autofocus, just make sure to tap on your point of interest before hitting record. And this will just make sure that the drone is focused on it before you start recording. 
The last reason why your video might be blurry is because you're running a high ISO. I find with the DJI Mini 3 Pro, for example, by the time you're up at them high ISOs, you actually get a soft image as well. Some auto video mode problems you might encounter is if, for example, you're flying around and all of a sudden it seems like your drone isn't automatically adjusting as you move the gimbal or as you change location, maybe everything's all of a sudden way too bright and your drone just doesn't seem to automatically adjust that exposure down. Or maybe everything's way too dark and your drone doesn't seem to bring the exposure up. You may have accidentally locked the exposure. Now you can do this by tapping and holding on the screen or you might have one of the function buttons mapped on your controller to do it. You might have pressed this accidentally. So to fix this, you simply want to turn off logged exposure and you can do this by tapping on the screen or by pressing that function button again in the controller and you get a prompt letting you know this has turned off and the exposure will start automatically adjusting again. Now, if you've tried turning off log exposure and your image is still too dark or too bright, you have maybe accidentally changed exposure compensation. Exposure compensation is an adjustment you can make when using auto mode to tell your drone to expose slightly darker or slightly brighter. And you can use this to have more control over the auto mode to do things like darken down the image to preserve highlights if you plan to color grade it in post. But you can accidentally set this by pressing and dragging on the screen or by tapping on the icon on the bottom right and sliding this if you're slightly unsure as to what it does. And you can tell if you've accidentally changed this because the EV value on the bottom right of the screen will be a minus number, meaning you're instructing the drone to expose darker, or a positive number, meaning you're instructing the drone to expose brighter. Now, if you're flying around and you're looking at the screen thinking the sky looks all white, there's like no detail or no clouds, or after a day's flying, you come home and the sky's just all white with no clouds in it, that's most likely because you've overexposed your image. But there's a few ways that you can make sure that you're not doing it. The first is overexposure warning, and you can turn this on in the settings. And when you overexpose your image, which basically means make it too bright, it will overlay zebras in the area of overexposure, which is most likely to be your sky. And it's basically letting you know that that portion of the image is too bright and it's overexposed and you need to bring the exposure down. And you can lower your exposure using the manual settings until they disappear. And this will help you know that you're capturing all the information, all the detail and all the clouds in the sky. Another tool that you can use is the histogram, which you can turn on in the settings. What you want to do is to make sure most of the graph is in the center. If it's all the way crushed to the right, then you have overexposed the image or are overexposing your image. And if it's all the way crushed to the bottom, then you're underexposing your image or your image is too dark. So you want to adjust your manual settings until most of the graph is in the center of the histogram. And then you'll know you have a nice evenly exposed image. Now, if you're using the manual settings, generally speaking, the way you darken the image down or the way you lower the exposure, is by increasing shutter speed. So you can increase your shutter speed until you've got an exposure that you're happy with. If you want to run a lower shutter speed to get motion blur, maybe you're setting your shutter speed to be double your frame rate and the image is still too overexposed or too bright, then you need to use an ND filter. If you want to know more about ND filters, I have a video which goes in depth about how to use them and when you should use them. And I'll put a link to that in the description down below. Now the opposite of all this is if the ground is too dark, everyone's really muddy, it's really hard to see the details of your ground for example, this is generally speaking underexposure. If everything's too dark, you have underexposed your image. Now you use the same tools to check your exposure. You firstly again use your histogram. Make sure that the graph isn't too far to the left of that histogram as that signals that you're underexposing your image. Again, you want to increase the exposure until that graph is in the center of the histogram. And there's a few ways that you can increase your exposure. You can lower your shutter speed, that will brighten up your image. If you're using an ND, you can use a lower strength ND, which has less of a darkening effect, letting more light back into that camera's sensor. Or if it's nighttime, you can start to raise your ISO. But again, be careful when raising ISO because of the problems mentioned before. You can introduce noise if you run a really high ISO and the image can start to get soft. Now, if you were flying your drone really fast or really low to the ground and you're watching it back and it looks quite jittery, it doesn't look very smooth, you don't have really dreamy like motion that you've seen in other videos, chances are you were running a high shutter speed. Whenever you run a high shutter speed, 
each frame that makes up your video is super sharp. And when you put this together, it can look quite unnatural and give you that jittery looking motion. To smooth out that motion and get what's called motion blur, you want to run a lower shutter speed. Now, generally speaking, to get motion blur, you want your shutter speed to be twice your frame rate. So if your frame rate is 25 FPS, set your shutter speed to be one over 50. And if your frame rate is 30 FPS, for example, set your shutter speed to be one over 60. And this will give you that really nice motion blur, that dreamy looking motion to your video clips. So there you have it. Those are the most common drone video problems you are likely to encounter and how to fix them. And hopefully if you've had any of these issues, you will be able to use these solutions to get much better drone video. Now, if you like this video and you've learned something new, please let me know by giving me the thumbs up and clicking that like button down below. And if you love all things drones and want to know how to get better videos and more cinematic photos with your drone, then I recommend you check out my channel where I have a ton of other content to help you level up your drone game. Make sure to click that subscribe button and make sure the notification bell is on so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you want to stick around and watch a few more of them now, here's a few I personally recommend. I'll not keep you back any further. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you over there.